Hey everybody, it's GoblinX, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today we'll be doing a quick draft of the Throne of Eldraine format. It is the current format in the quick draft queues. Those do swap around on the 16th to something else. I don't remember exactly, but they're the quick draft for now, and it's definitely a pretty fun format. It'll be nice to try it out again here. Has been quite a while since I drafted it, but hopefully my, uh, my memory of the format will not fail me. And we've got a pretty easy pick one, pack one here that should not uh, should not be too much of a struggle. We've got Stolen by the Fae, two blue and X to return a creature with converted amount of cost X to its owner's hand, and you can create X 1-1 one, one fairy creatures with flying. So this is a great way to turn a game around. You slow down your opponent a lot by bouncing their biggest thing, and you create a field of your own that you can either trade into their attackers if you're very much on the defensive, or just start chipping away at your opponent's life total with evasion with the flying ability. So Stolen by the Fae, a very impressive card here, and it's going to be a pretty easy pick one, pack one. There's a couple other powerful cards here, but I think the next best cards are both in Multicolor, Drown in the Lock, and Resolute Rider. So those are definitely a little harder to cast, I guess. Resolute Rider, since it is a hybrid cost, you don't have to be white and black. You could be white or black, but you do require four specific colored mana symbols. So even if you're in white, if you're in like white, red or something, this is really hard to cast. Or if you're in black and another color, it's really hard to cast. So pretty restrictive mana cost, even with the hybrid symbols there. So it's basically a white, black, gold card. Uh, similar to Drown of the Lock being a blue-black there, so Stolen by the Fae leaves us really open, and it's also just a very strong card. Now we have a Stormfist Crusader passed to us. It is a black and red for a 2-2 Menace Knight. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. So it's good in, like, aggressive decks, so um, any deck where you're dumping your hand out generally faster than your opponent is that way you're running out of cards before them so you're getting more value out of the draw ability since this does fuel both you and your opponent also getting any value from the life loss there can help so in an aggressive deck that'll be pretty good that's interesting but i don't think i want to take it immediately after taking a stolen by the fae we're definitely not going to play blue red and black so we're just not going to end up in a deck um, where we're playing both stolen by the fae and Stormfist crusader and we've got a pretty powerful uncommon here that we could use with Stolen by the Fae, just a blue powerful uncommon luck dragon. Four mana for a 3-2 flyer when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can discard a card to draw a card. The fact that this gives you a little bit of value even just when it enters the battlefield, even if it gets killed immediately is great, and it gives you that consistent ability to keep drawing. Um, if it, uh, if it gets to attack, so it kind of snowballs a lot of card advantage out that way. So Lock Dragon seems pretty great. Ideally, we'll be in blue-red for this, or just mono-blue, uh, because the mana cost is quite restrictive. But it is a powerful card, and I'm happy to take it there. Now we have a Thunderous Snapper. We could go for Mono Blue here. I think this card is pretty good as well. 4 mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, you draw a card. I guess in Mono Blue I wouldn't expect to end up with a ton of stuff that, uh, that costs that much mana. Although if you draw just one card out of it, it's pretty good. If you draw more than that, you're living the dream. So... I guess there are a few good expensive blue cards in this format, if I recall correctly. There's like a 5-mana 2-4 flyer that gets plus 2, plus 0 if you've drawn a second card during your turn. And that is at common. That's a pretty good expensive blue card. I think I'm going to take Thunderous Snapper here. It's another um, very restrictive blue mana cost here, so we'd be moving into trying to do the mono blue thing here. And that seems like a fun place to be. I do enjoy drafting mono-colored in draft in the few sets where it's available, and Throne of Eldraine is definitely a set where they have some mechanics built around uh, giving you the ability to draft a mono-colored deck. That being said, the blue cards out of this pack aren't that great, so I'm kind of interested in maybe Sir Kara the Bold. Sir Kara the Bold is another good draw engine, 5 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever she or an instant or sorcery spell spell you control deals damage to a player, you get to exile the top card for library, and you can play that this turn. So if you use this before you cast anything else during your turn, then you can play anything that costs um, anything that's like cheap enough for you to cast for the turn. 
So potentially just drawing you an extra card every single turn if you can afford to not use her on blocks. Yeah, Sir Kara seems pretty great. I think we'll roll with her here. Uh, we could end up in blue-red here, end up cutting the Thunder Snapper, or maybe keeping it in if we end up heavier into blue than red, and it can just be a somewhat difficult cost there. I think it's just the best card in this pack for us. Both run away together and Mist Ford River Turtle are okay, but just nowhere near as exciting as potentially drawing an additional card every turn. And now we have... Some decent blue cards and an okay red one. In red and blue in this format, the primary mechanic is trying to draw additional cards each turn. There are a lot of cards that will trigger whenever you draw your second card each turn, like the Blood Haze Wolverine here. This one doesn't have a crazy great ability to trigger because it's just making your Wolverine a great attacker, so it's good in an aggressive deck, uh, but some of, the, some of the cards that benefit off of drawing two cards a turn have some very drastic um, benefits for doing so. And this one's just pretty good if you're aggressive. So Queen of Ice seems better if you're defensive. You get to cast Rage of Winter, tap something down, and then for three mana you get a 2-3 that whenever it deals combat damage to a creature it keeps it tapped down so even if it like chump blocks a really big creature from your opponent it essentially chump blocks two turns in a row because you block it the one turn and keep it tapped for the next turn seems pretty nice Vantress Paladin's good if you're heavy into blue if you can consistently cast this as a 3-3 flyer it's pretty solid so you want to be blue as the core of your deck that is how we're looking right now mainly blue with some red for Sarkara so I think Vantress Paladin's good, Queen of Ice is good, Blood Haze Wolverine could be good if we're aggressive. I think we're looking more defensive, probably, with great draw engines like Cercara and Lock Dragon, stolen by the Fey being a good card in the late game to try to turn things around. So I kind of like the Queen of Ice here. It's also the easiest card to cast, only requiring one mana in its color. Vantress Paladin, ideally we'd need triple blue uh, for that card to be good. Yeah, I like Queen of Ice here. I think I'll roll with her, see how Elsa does for us today. And now what do we have? We have Scalding Cauldron. Definitely a playable card if you are low on removal. And can go into any deck. So that is an option. Not really looking towards any other colors, because none of these off-color cards are insanely powerful here. Nothing to really push us into another color or speculate on. Maybe a Moonlit Scavengers here. Six mana for a 4-5 when it enters the battlefield. If you control an artifact or enchantment, you get to return an opponent's creature. So, like, if you can't ever trigger this ability, this card's basically unplayable, just a six mana 4-5. But if you do get to bounce a thing with it, this seems solid. Because by the time you're playing this on turn six, you can bounce something pretty big, ideally, from your opponent's deck. We don't have anything that combos with it right now. Yeah, I'm not super looking into the Moonlit Scavengers right now. It is a card that tends to go late in human drafts as well. Don't know how the bots will take this card or how highly they'll take it, but we'll find out. I think I'll just take a Scalding Cauldron. It's going to be a fine card. Mediocre removal, but removal nonetheless. Something that you will always end up playing if you don't get any, under any other removal. Now we have Dwarven Mine, which is good in a heavy red deck, but we're definitely looking more towards heavy blue. Red Cap Raiders. Seems like a solid attacker. Three mana for three, two. When it attacks, if you tap an untapped non-human you control, then it attacks as a four, three trample instead, which is pretty nice. We don't have a ton of creatures, and we don't have a ton of cheap creatures right now, so it doesn't look great for us currently, but if we get a bunch of those, like, 2 mana 2-1 Wolverines, this will work well with those, because any turn where the Wolverines are too small to attack in, they can just help the Raiders get in. Witching Well seems okay. Definitely would help out with cards that care about us having artifacts out, like the Moonlit Scavengers that we saw. Just a Scry 2 and then Draw 2. A little bit slow, a little bit of uh, a lot of mana for the ability. Four mana to draw the two cards, one to scry initially. But it seems fine if you have cards that want you to have artifacts out. And the Mist Ford River Turtle. Just a nice defensive card, and then the late game it can be used to chip away for the final few points of damage by letting your best non-human attacker get an unblockable. 
I think all of these cards are okay. None of these really stand out as much more powerful or weaker than the rest here between Red Cap Raiders, Mistford River Turtle, and Witching Well. We do already have two four mana creatures, although I don't know how likely we are to play Thunderous Snapper right now. So it's probably the least likely card out of the whole deck to end up seeing play, so we'll put that to the side for now when I consider Mana Curve in, uh, in this choice. Yeah, I think it's early enough on. We don't really need to worry too much about how our curve looks, so I think it's just between Witching Well and River Turtle to me. I think we are looking more defensive still. I think I'll just take a Turtle. Seems solid. Now we have a Wishful Merfolk, 2 mana for 3-2 Defender. You have to spend mana to be able to attack with it, but it is 3 power, 2 toughness on curve, which is good power and toughness. It's just not great in aggressive decks because you don't want to be dumping your mana into it um, instead of just casting other spells. Bargin is a fine combat trick, and then there's just off-color stuff, none of it looking great here. I'll just take the Merfolk. We could end up playing that. Well, now we have another River Turtle. Again, definitely heavier into blue than red, so we're not really getting any adamant bonuses on cards like Emberth Paladin, so it's just a 4-1 haste for 4. Seems pretty bad. Red Cap Melee seems solid. You can definitely main deck, main deck this as a removal. You can just cast it later on in the game to kill any creature. 1 mana instant speed, deal 4 to a creature planeswalker, and then sacrifice a land. It's not something you want to play early in the game um, if you are uh, playing against a deck that doesn't have red creatures, but it also is just a really good removal spell if you happen to be playing against red. So, great removal spell if you happen to be playing against red, and fine, main deckable if you're not. Just play it late in the game. Just don't, uh, don't destroy your lands immediately with that card. It seems solid. Crashing Drawbridge here. Seems like a fine blocker in the early game, and then when you play a big creature later on, you can immediately attack with it. I already have two turtles, so I'm not super interested in a third. We also have a ton of four mana cards already. We've got four of them. And this doesn't look like it's going to be a Weaselback Red Cap deck, and that is for a like a very aggressive deck. I don't think we're going to be looking that way. I'm going to take a Crashing Drawbridge here. Getting pretty defensive, and we could just have a third River Turtle, I guess, at this point, because we're taking it over not much else. Although, I guess Prophet of the Peak could trigger, like, Thunder of Snapper's ability to draw a card. But ideally, we'll find a better 6 or 7 drop at the top end of our curve. Well, we do see a Blood Haze Wolverine pr pretty late here as a good aggressive card for a blue-red draw 2 deck. So, maybe we will start seeing uh, some good aggressive cards towards that theme. Unfortunately, nothing great for the pick one, pack one here. Or pick two, pack two, pick one. My brain will get there eventually, it happens. Um, I guess we aren't that heavy into red, so we could try going for a Piper of the Swarm here, moving into blue-black. But at this point, we do have, like, good red stuff. Like, we don't have a lot of red stuff, but Sir Kara, Red Cap Melee, and Luck Dragon are all pretty great. Yeah, I think I'm committed enough. I don't really want to hop on the Piper of the Swarm train, but at the same time, in terms of blue or red cards I'd be taking out of here, there's not much. I'm not going to take another Mist Ford River Turtle. That'd be my fourth. And Crystal Slipper just doesn't seem great. It's an equipment, so you want a bunch of creatures for it, ideally even just some, some tokens and stuff. Honestly, the best card for our current deck for just blue-red potentially draw two per turn would just be the Golden Egg, because we just get to play this for two, draw another card with it, and then gain some life with it later on. So this is just the best card for the deck we're going for right now, and this is not a card that is anywhere near the power level of something I'd like to take first pick out of any pack. So I th think I'll just go with the Piper of the Swarm, just a bit speculative there, just... If black ends up being super open, we see a bunch of great black cards and not much in our other colors, we could go for it there. Wow, and another really good rare here in a completely different color, Wildborn Preserver. Two mana for a 2-2 flash and reach. Whenever another non-human enters the battlefield, you can dump a bunch of mana into this to put a bunch of counters on it. Really good card, but again, not in our colors. 
But yet again, I think the best card in our colors for the deck we have right now would be Unexplained Vision, probably. 5 mana, scry 3, draw 3, solid late game draw spell. Definitely what we're looking for in a slower sort of deck like we're drafting right now. If we're taking something to go with Piper the Swarm, Order of Midnight is solid. 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer on curve. Only good in an aggressive deck since it can't block, but if you get this late in the game, you do get to cast Alter Fate as well. Potentially draw a card off of this. You know, I think when we see cards that are just so powerful, like Piper of the Swarm and Wildborn Preserver, in contention with pretty average cards like Unexplained Vision and Bloodhaze Wolverine, I think I'm okay to just keep speculating here. And, you know, maybe I just completely jump strategies. Yeah, the bots might be just cutting me off blue-red here because... These cards are not very powerful. Unexplained Vision, again, probably the best for our deck. Uh, although Runaway Together is playable if you have a bunch of good, like, adventure creatures. Um, so it is something that you can combo together with a bunch of the merfolk that mills your opponent for. That was definitely a strategy people would do uh, early on in the draft format. Just keep looping the mill merfolk and milling people out that way. I think the best card in this pack is probably just uh, Inspiring Veteran or OK Adversary. Um, if you're disregarding what we currently have, and we could play an OK Adversary with Wildborn Preserver. Another one of those cards that's like, it's fine if you're not playing against green, and it's just absolutely absurd if you are playing against green. 4 mana 2-3 Death Touch that can draw additional cards when it hits your opponent, like a Death Toucher that, that's you don't want to let hit you because it has a good ability when it hits you as well can often just trade into something pretty good so even at four mana this is fine and if we are playing against a green deck at two mana as i said before really really solid i'm just going to take okay adversary here we might be pushing into green at the very least because again not super pumped by the stuff i'm seeing in in uh, blue or red grum goalie for red green that seems like a big bold push to take to take that um although that would be if we cut blue add in green so if we cut blue how does the deck look here we go green red thunder snappers pretty hard to cast uh, but we would have a grumgully at three and grumgully is really good it makes all of your creatures later on very solid and it's a three mana three three on curve so even if it doesn't get any extra value it's fine May I play this turn 3 and then turn 4 you get to play your adversary as like a 3-4 death touch. Snappers, a 5-5, five, five, stuff like that. Can be really good in the right deck. So that would be if we're in green-red. If we go blue-green, we could take Tome Raider here for the draw 2 deck. It's definitely good for that kind of stuff. But blue-green isn't really the draw 2 deck. We just might have some stuff that cares about drawing 2 per turn in blue. So if we go blue-green instead of... Um, Instead of green-red, how does our deck look right now? <laughs> we got a bunch of turtles, that's for sure. This is interesting. I think both of these look fine. Neither stands out as a ton better. Although I do think Rumgully is generally in the right deck going to be better than Tome Raider. We don't have any stuff that cares about drawing two per turn right now for the Tome Raider, but it's still a solid little um, little draw spell, little chump blocker. I think I'm going to take Gr Grumgully here. Red-green monsters is just a thing that I enjoy quite a bit, um, so I could see pushing into red-green over anything else. Best card out of this pack looks to be probably into the story just a big late game draw spell that would work well in like our blue green deck because it would be slower but i think at this point i'm gonna commit move into green red here because with grum Gully, the twin veil tree folk combo as well with that because it is another non-human creature and this is just going to work well in a green-red strategy in the first place. You get a couple counters on one of your earlier aggressive creatures, and then you get a big old 6-5 in the late game. Pretty solid card. Crashing Drawbridge is great when you have big late game creatures with it, like Twin Veil Tree Folk. I think I like the idea of pushing in the green-red here. 
Thunder Snap are definitely good in that strategy as well if we end up with uh, green as the most heavy color. What do we have here? Not much in red. Barge and Fling. In blue, there's just a Wishful Merfolk. So I think we're just taking Garen Brig Carver. It's not insane or anything, but any adventure creatures can be pretty good if you have them in the right situations. Like any time where this little combat trick of plus two, plus two till end of turn gets you any value at all, then this card's great. Uh, but it's not often you're going to be in a situation where it does, so often just a 4-mana 3-2, not awesome. But for the off chance that Shields Might does a lot of work for you, um, you'll have a great time any time that that happens. I need to fix my curve here. I've got my 4s and 5s all together. Now we have Garen Briggs Squire. 2-mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast a creature that has an adventure, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. So it's a good aggressive beater in a green-red deck because we're likely to have multiple creatures with adventures. We already have Garen Brig Carver and Twin Veil Tree Folk, so that'll combo well with those two. We're definitely more likely to have things that combo with adventures than things that combo with knights. We're not going to have a ton of knights in this deck to untap the trebuchet, but even without a ton of knights, uh, if you're a slower kind of deck, a more defensive one, this can be solid. I think with like Grumgully now, with the adventure creatures, we are trying to push into a more aggressive strategy, and I like the Garen Briggs Squire more for that here. Now what do we have? Unfortunately, not much of anything. We're not likely to play a pump spell like Insatiable Appetite when we can just play pump spells like Garen Briggs Carver instead, pump spells that come with creatures thanks to adventure cards. That being said, I think we're definitely not playing Crystal Slipper. And we're definitely not playing just anything else in this pack. Unless we moved into black-green at the last second. I guess since we're just 100% not playing Insatiable Appetite, I suppose I just take the best black card for our strategy if we ended up in black-green. Which we'd have a Piper of the Swarm in here. Cauldron's Gift we'd want to adamant with ideally, otherwise just 5 mana to reanimate one thing doesn't seem that great. Yeah, the 2 mana 2-2 two, two on curve works well with the food synergies that green-black can get, because you can now sacrifice food tokens to just make this a big late-game threat. Yeah, I think I like Malevolent Noble best for if we ended up in black-green somehow. Not likely, but you never know. I think I like Garen Brig Carver the best. We're almost guaranteed to be green, although these are good black cards for moving into green-black now, just moving into the powerful... The powerful rares that we opened up in pack 2, Piper of the Swarm and Wildborn Preserver. So we have Forever Young. Definitely works against the mill decks pretty well. It can cycle itself and in the late game you can just shove all of your best stuff back on top. Or we have Foreboding Fruit more consistently going to draw you more cards but Forever Young probably better in the late game. I think I like both of these. Both seem solid. I'm just going to take the Garen Brig Carver here and be safe. Like, we're definitely green as fun as the, the push into black would be. When we see a pack like this, we can now take, like, Wolverine and for the, the red-green strategy over just a Jousting Dummy. I guess Jousting Dummy we could play whatever colors we end up in. No, I think we're still likely enough to go red-green. I'll take the, the Blood Haze Wolverine. And this pack's bad. I don't want to play any of these cards, but I guess the most likely would be like Emberth Paladin. Just as a random creature. This is okay in the really aggressive non-human decks, because just for one mana you can immediately attach it to a non-human. It's like a really slow Rancor which was a great enchantment. That was an enchantment that gives plus two plus zero oh trample, and then whenever the creature dies, you put it back into your hand, so you could just keep recasting it for only one. This is kind of like that, but it costs five to, to suit it on other things, so a lot more expensive to do so, but still solid. All right, let's see what we get out of the final pack here. Definitely nothing in the rare slot, just a Sorcerer's Spyglass. This card is entirely designed for Constructed, so that's not going to do much for us. We have, what, Bognati, which is good in a food deck. If you have a lot of food in your deck, you can use this as a removal spell and a flyer all at once. We don't have any food in this deck right now, so I'm not super pumped and super interested in that. And also, 
Black is not 100% getting played here, whereas green is, and Garen Brig Paladin's a pretty large creature for a green-based deck. 5 mana for a 4-4 four four that can't be chump blocked, because it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And it could potentially, if you have Adamant with it, be a 5-5 five five instead of a 4-4, four four, so I think I like Garen Brig Paladin here. Kendra's Transformation. 2 mana, draw a card, turn their best creature into just a 3-3. Three three. Good against Flyers. Uh, if we don't have any removal for those, or just good against big creatures in the late game, I think I like Kendra's Transformation pretty easily here over the other mediocre cards. Now we have Epic Downfall in black. Great black removal, but uh, I guess we have nothing in green and only a Trebuchet in red. We'll take Trebuchet in red if we have to be, um, if we have to be just green red here, but Kind of like spinning wheel here as well to help just like splash in Piper the Swarm. Be green. Green is our base, splash in red and black. So we have one, two, three, four, five cards that are red here. If we cut those, we only have a 15 card deck. There's no way, there's no possible way we can end up in just green black. We could be green as our core, splashing in other colors, but then ideally we need some mana fixing. I think we take a spinning wheel here over a brimstone trebuchet, just get some mana fixing. And in the late game, if we have a bunch of extra mana and we're getting beaten down, we can start tapping our opponent's biggest threat every turn. So spinning wheel seems solid here. Oh, another lock dragon. That would have been good if we were still heavy into blue or heavy into red. I think because we are moving into three colors here, we are going to have to just take a Rose Thorn Acolyte. We can use the Ritual to turn one of our green mana into a mana of a different color, like to cast a Piper of the Swarm turn two. If we just have a bunch of forests and mountains and a Piper in hand, if we have a Rose Thorn Acolyte, we can still cast Piper of the Swarm on turn two, thanks to Seasonal Ritual. So the adventure is great for that. And obviously the creature itself is mana ramp and mana fixing all in one, which is very solid, adding a mana of any color. Uh, by tapping it. So Rose Thorn Acolyte's pretty great here for this build. We're going to have to scoop that up. Now we have Wildwood Tracker. Only if we're really aggressive. If we're three colors here, we're not really aggressive. We're decently aggressive. I guess we can take a Blood Haze Wolverine. Just do green red as the core with a light black splash. I guess if we're doing that, we can use Joust as just a Prey Upon style fight effect. We don't have a lot of removal right now, do we? We just have Red Cap Melee, Scalding Cauldron, and Kenrith's Transformation. I could see getting some more removal. We're also going to have some big creatures in the late game that would fight well. We have 17 creatures right now, only 5 non-creatures. I think we can take a Joust over this Blood Haze Wolverine, and the Wolverine might wheel based on what we've been seeing earlier. Yeah, two mana, have two creatures fight. Alright, well, I think Searing Barrage seems like a better removal spell for this deck. Because it's just 5 to a creature we cast in the late game. Just a good defensive one. Ogre Errant seems okay, but mainly if you're in a knight deck and we do not have a lot of knights. So basically just a 4 mana 3, 4. Yeah, I think Searing Barrage is the best here. Now I think we take that Blood Haze Wolverine. I don't think we want the Black Splash to be super heavy for the Reeve Soul. Actually, ooh, Rampart Smasher? Kind of a difficult mana cost when we are going to be three colors, but our Black Splash is going to be pretty light, so we should only need one or two Swamps in here when we have Spinning Wheel and Rose Thorn Acolyte. So it shouldn't be the hardest thing to cast ever, because both of our main colors are green and red. Yeah, four mana, five, five, and potentially the ability matters, but basically four mana, five, five. It seems fun, seems solid, definitely better than the Blood Haze Wolverine, I just didn't even notice it in the corner with its disgusting parallax art style. Gotta turn that off. No, I, I, I'm I, a little rude to the parallax styles, I just don't like the, the 3D effect. As you can see on the edges, they just mirror the artwork, that always looks weird to me. Um, Jousting Lance, definitely great in a knight deck, 2 mana to... Um, for an equipment that you equip for one tonight's to give plus two, plus two. Do we have, like, any knights? 
We don't have a lot, do we? We have two knights in this whole deck. With only two knights, I don't think we're going for the Jousting Lance. It's also our off color. Although I guess we're not really playing anything here. We're definitely not splashing in Malevolent Noble, so we just have Piper of the Swarm in black, so we're not going to take another Noble. We're not going to take Steel Claw Lance. It's a rough splash, and we don't have a lot of knights. So I guess we just take Barge in, and we're not even interested in that when we have two pump spells off of Garenbrig Carvers. Definitely not a Claim the Firstborn deck. We're not going to have any sacrifice effects because black is just a splash. Yeah, I'll just take a barge in, I guess, but doesn't feel like it'll get run here. Now, I could see running a Prophet of the Peak, although I could also see running a Brimstone Trebuchet. Even without a, not, without a lot of knights, it's a fine blocker. It's got reach, so it can block flyers, and it puts a clock on your opponent, a really slow one, but if you've got big bulky blockers to slow down the game it can uh, it can chip away at your opponent and try to get him eventually that way i guess we do have that thunderous snapper that i would like to use we do have a spinning wheel and rosethorn acolyte helping cast that um so it's probably main deckable for us and with that i would like a little bit more at the high mana cost we could take a profit here seems fine yeah brimstone trebuchet just again we only have two knights in the whole deck It's not, not untapping often. Like, it's playable, but just not awesome. Another Bloodhaze Wolverine, or Crash and Drawbridge, or Garenbrig Squire. Actually, I think I'd rather have Squire than anything else here. It doesn't combo well with Grumgully, but we want uh, green to be our most prominent color when we have cards like Thunder Snapper and some mana fixing in green like Rose Thorn Acolyte. So we want to prioritize the green to drop over the red one, even if it's a little bit of a nombo with the Grumgully. And we're not playing any of this. Not going to main deck a flying hate card. We could use the Thrill of Possibility here. We don't really have any card draw right now, so I might as well toss one of these bad boys in there. I think I like it better than another Crashing Drawbridge. Again, not playing the... Um, it's a little random pump spell there, but... Not playing the off-color card there either. So let's see if there's anything we left in the sideboard that should be considered here. Maybe a Lock Dragon, but that seems like it'll be a really hard mana cost. We want green to be the core of this deck. We have two cards that could be cast off of four green. Rampart Smasher and Thunder Snapper. We have a mana fixing spell in green. We'll consistently want the green mana for the Rose Thorn Acolyte. Yeah, I don't know if I can justify a card that the only way we cast is off of four red. Seems very difficult. This is probably like a seven mana card for us on average. By the time we get enough red for it. Yep, I think everything in the sideboard stays in the sideboard. We just have to make four cuts to this deck. Don't really think I like the Rose Thorn Halberd here. A lot of our... Well, a couple of our early game creatures, like the Garenbrig Squires, are humans, so it combos poorly with those. And I don't really think we're aggressive enough to be making great use of this. I think we'll dump that out of here. Three more cuts to go. Yeah, Lockthwain Gargoyle could be a cut here. I mean, it's okay. It's nothing exciting. But I think that could be a cut. We could cut Thunder Snapper as well. It is the hardest card to cast. But potentially quite good. How many non-creatures do we have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven non-creatures. We also have uh, two pump spells from Garen Brig Carver. A permanent pump spell from Twin Veil Tree Folks. That kind of ups the non-creature count. I think I could cut something down here. We have Joust, Redcap, Melee, Kenra's Transformation, and Searing Barrage. I think we're okay to cut a Scalding Cauldron. We don't have anything that cares about us having artifacts out either. I think I could cut Cauldron, Gargoyle, and then one last cut to finish off the deck. Potentially one of the two mana cards. We seem a little more, a little more rampy, a little more late game than... And fast. We don't have anything that draws, do we? We just have Thrill of Possibility that draws us additional cards to give Bloodhaze Wolverines plus one. 
So more often than not, Blood Haze Wolverine's a 2-mana two 2-1 two with no text. I guess we have a couple ways to draw, but not a lot. We have Thrill of Possibility, Kenra's Transformation, and Th Okame Adversary and Thunderous Snapper. These are situational draws. Thrill of Possibility and Kenra's Transformation are always going to draw one card when we play them. So we have two guaranteed draws and two situational draws. Maybe that is enough to justify the Wolverines. I don't know, they also do combo with the Grum Goalie. And they're also in red though, and I'd like to cut more red, have even more green as the core. I'll just cut one Wolverine and I think happy to run this deck as it is. Let's get rid of the Parallax card styles. And uh, actually not completely as is, we should change our mana base for sure. Make sure that that is all up to par. Okay, so we have 13 green cards, 8 red cards, and 1 black card. One of our red cards is Rampart Smasher though, which is potentially mono green. Yep, only black card is the Piper of the Swarm. Doesn't do anything crazy until we hit double black, so... I think I do still want two swamps, maybe? Probably not three, though. Because we have, right now, we have one, two, three, four, five black sources. I think I'm okay with just four of them. It's, on average, one out of every ten cards... In a standard game of Magic, you draw 7 as your opener, so 3 turns into the game, you'll have seen 10 cards. So we're, we're 10 cards deep on turn 3. 1 out of 10. And we can afford to be off by a while for that. Piper the Swarm can come out late game and still be a good mana sink. I'm not great if we're on the defensive and it's our best play on like turn 4, but it could still do things. Maybe it's not even worth the splash, honestly. I could see maybe if we cut that, we could throw in, like, Lock Dragon instead, because then we go down three swamps and we can still run, like, nine mountains or something to help with that, and we have the mana fixing of Spinning Wheel plus Rose Thorn Acolyte. Yeah, maybe we cut the, uh... Cut the Piper, try the Lock Dragon. Could even throw a Blood Haze Wolverine back in instead of something else now. Like, take out the Spinning Wheel. But I think, actually, with the amount of, like, four, five, six mana cards we have, Spinning Wheel's good, even if we're just two-color. And, obviously, the restrictive mana cost at four as well. Yeah, I actually kind of like putting in the Lock Dragon instead of the Piper as our difficult-to-cast, somewhat splashy card. And that puts us at 13 green cards, nine red cards. However, we do need double red on Sakara. We need four red for Lock Dragon, but we need four green for Thunderous Snapper. We do have that mana fixing in green from Rose Thorn Acolyte. I think I want to cut one more mountain, put in one, one, one more forest here. This is our green red deck. Yeah, this is definitely a fine drawbridge deck because of the just big creatures we have later on. Still not an awesome Wolverine deck because we're just not that aggressive. But this overall seems okay. I don't know if there's anything better to throw in if we're just green-red here. Throw in like a Scalding Cauldron instead of one of these Blood Haze Wolverines. Just have another removal spell instead of an early game creature. I could see that actually in this deck. I could see that being justified. Just again, don't have a lot comboing with the Wolverines, and they're not, not really great if you're not that aggressive. I don't think we're that aggressive. But I guess uh, we also have that, that kind of difficulty with Wildborn Preserver and Grumgully caring about non-humans. And now we're, we're cutting another non-human and leaving in the human, so maybe we cut a Garenbrick Squire instead. Maybe we actually cut both of those. 
and put the wolverines back in just for more non-humans if we do that then we might go nine red eight green because we just caught two green cards for red cards We still have one more green card than red card. We just have a little bit more red symbols because Sirkara. Or Sirkara. Don't know how to pronounce anything at any point in time. I think I like this a little better. Get a, more, get a little more non-humans in here to combo with that kind of stuff. Now we're green-red. A bit rampy here. Decent amount of somewhat cheap removal and some... Decent early game creatures like the Wolverines. Try to survive with these cards and then start dumping out some 4-4s four and 5-5s. Five 6-5s, fives, 5-5s. Five fives. Seems like a fun deck. We did kind of pivot into red-green monsters off of the blue start was stolen by the face. So that was uh, definitely an interesting draft. Did not see a lot of good stuff in blue in pack 2. However, in pack three, I think we did start seeing a lot more decent blue cards. So if we just stuck to our guts and stayed in blue-red, we still would have had a solid deck overall, I think. So I'm not so sure that the, the pivot was completely correct, but I think we've ended with a, a pretty solid deck here um, regardless. And I think that our green rare is even stronger than the stolen by the Fae. The two mana, two, two, flash reach just gets bigger and bigger throughout the game. It's just a very solid card. We have milled our spinning wheel. Opponent has milled a forest. They're on black, white, and green. Let's drop... Can't play any creatures here. I could play my little pump spell or I could Rose Thorn Acolyte for a mana. No reason to do any of that, so I'll just pass here, I think. This eye collector is going to get to just keep poking me for one damage a turn for a while here. I think we just let it be annoying. I think I'd still rather play Rose Thorn Acolyte turn three than just shoot their 1-1 one, one flyer. It's such a slow clock, only one damage per turn, and even the mill is a very slow clock. Unfortunately, they did hit our Wildborn Preserver, though, which is probably the best card in our deck. I suppose if they have a lot of recursion, which they could in black have a lot of ways to bring things back out of the graveyard, then Eye Collector does not, um, does not hurt them at all. In fact, it helps them, whereas it does hurt us a little bit anytime it hits something good like Wildborn Preserver. I think I still just cast Rivers Thorn Acolyte, though. I don't think it's like a need to kill target this early on. We just go down to 17. They mill one more card. They mill a Kenris transformation. Now we can cast our 3-2 or we can kill our we can kill their eye collector. We can kill their shambling shoot as, suit as well. I'll just cast the 3-2. It's big enough to block the Shambling Suit unless they play another Artifact or Enchantment. They're the full black-green-white here with cards like Outmuscle that are better with Adamant. But Outmuscle's out great even if you can't trigger Adamant, so I would even splash in an Outmuscle, so... Yeah. I don't know what the core of their deck is, because we've seen Gingerbread Cabin and Outmuscle. Both of these require three forests. Ooh, they've got a mountain as well. So they're on, like, four-color good stuff. I'm gonna assume without Muscle and Gingerbread Cabin that green is the core, and they've just drawn a little awkwardly here. Green also has the mana fixing, like, Rose Thorn Acolyte to support that sort of deck. So they can't attack us with Shambling Suit anymore. We can just Cauldron away the Eye Collector. I think I'll attack with Carver here. I can play a Crashing Drawbridge that is more than large enough to block Shambling Suit. And then we can just deal with the Flyer with our Scalding Cauldron. So this is pretty cool. I don't know if I've seen 4-color in Eldraine yet. 
just because stuff like adamant is one of the core mechanics that wants you to have just a ton of a ton of mana in like one specific color. They finally have the forest now, so I wouldn't be surprised if that opens them up to some pretty powerful plays. It's possible we're supposed to cauldron. Um, okay, wow. We are definitely not supposed to cauldron during our turn. I was going to say, it's possible we're supposed to cauldron during our turn. Um, just to make sure they don't have a pump spell to save the eye collector. Um, but now I'm just going to cauldron bog naughty because that, that's a 3-3 flyer instead of a 1-1 flyer. We can let them keep milling us if we get to kill the better, scarier flyer. Blood Haze Wolverine here. We have Searing Barrage is also an instant to kill something. We have Joust as well, though. I think I'd rather Joust here. So I'll attack with Garenbrig Carver first. That way it just gets through, gets its damage in. And then I can use Joust to have it deal damage equal to its power to Eye Collector. And uh, since it is a fight, it does take one damage from that. So I did that after combat so that they couldn't trade off Shambling Suit into Garenbrig Carver. So they don't really have any pressure on us now when we have a Searing Barrage for their next scary threats. So I'm feeling okay here. They do still have three cards in hand though. They may be stuck off of a double green spell or something that might be scary. This is also their sixth mana now, so they could also have cards like the six mana colorless 5-5. Five five. Never know what's coming up. Forever Young, very solid card there. Put any number of creatures from their grave on top of their library and draw a card. They choose Wintermore Commander and Bog Naughty. The Wintermore Commander... It's a little Death Toucher. That's pretty annoying, but they don't have a lot of other knights, so that's likely just a 2-2. Two -two. Or a 2-1. So we can trade that with Wolverine. That's not bad. But Bognati's scary. We'll have to kill Bognati with Searing Barrage. So they have redrawn the Bognati. And pretty certain the next card is the White Black Knight. Alright, I'm going to keep this land in our hand because we do have Thrill of Possibility. That requires us to discard a card to draw. Keep attacking with the Garenbrig Carver, the Blood Haze Wolverine can't attack in without dying to the suit. And we're holding on to Searing Barrage rather than getting the suit out of the way so that we can kill their flyer when they cast it. There's the Bog Naughty. And a Rose a Thorn Halberd to give it plus two, plus one here, make it a bigger flyer. So that'll still be four toughness, still small enough to die to Searing Barrage. We could always barrage in response if it wasn't. So they're down to eight now. That does make Shambling Suit a two, three now though, since they have another artifact here. Garenbrig Carver's a great draw, give plus two, plus two. We make something three toughness minimum, we get to attack in with both now. Whatever they block, we'll use our combat trick on, and then we'll just cast another 3-2. So this Garenbrig Carver is certainly doing a lot more work than the first one. By letting us kill that Shambling Suit and get a 3-2 out. Now the Wintermore Commander. Definitely attack in with everybody. We'll accept any trade that happens there. They only have 4 mana up. Unless they haven't played a land for the turn. Um, and they have another land drop in hand. I don't think they played land for turn, but they must not have had another land drop in hand. I've got a Twin Veil Tree Folk here. Do I want to just buff something right now? I think I do. If I buff the Wolverine, then they have to block Wolverine and they just take lethal from the Carvers. So this presents lethal immediately if they don't have an instant speed blocker or removal spell. Alternatively, we could also just cast Twin Veil Tree Folk and give it haste. So either way, we present lethal this turn. So they give that plus whatever, plus whatever, just a combat trick there. But that will not save them from the lethal damage here. Alright, so that will end 
Game one. Definitely a big fan of the adventure mechanic. Anytime you get any use out of any adventure, um, your creature is just getting you a lot of value. It's always a great time, even when it's an adventure just as as seemingly mediocre or minuscule as the Garenbrig Carvers, just having that ability to cast this pump spell to kill their blocker without losing a creature, and then also get a 3-2 that turn was very solid. So I'm going to keep this hand. It's not incredible, but it seems solid. We have that early Scalding Cauldron, Grumgully turn 3 for our later creatures. Of course, it's not going to put any counters on the Garenbrig Carver, which is the saddest part of this hand. The least combo-y. The Nombo, so to speak. So our opponent is on blue. We see two islands here. They could be monocolored. That's always a thing. Golden egg coming out turn two. Lots of reasons you would potentially want to uh, play golden egg in your deck. Does not have to be for the mana ability, so they're not necessarily multicolored here. But here we go. Blue and green from our opponent. And a giant opportunity to make three foods. So if they have any cards that combo with those foods, that could be pretty good. Um, I'm kind of interested in dumping out a, a Rose Thorn Acolyte. But I think playing Grumgully is better, because whether or not we cast Rose Thorn Acolyte, we can cast the Lock Dragon next turn if we draw Mountain. Because if I play Mountain and Acolyte, then if I draw Mountain, I play my third Mountain, use Acolyte for the third red. But also, if I just don't play the Acolyte, I can make my Forest produce red mana that turn with Seasonal Ritual instead. So either way, whether or not we cast Rose Thorn Acolyte, we're setting up for a Lock Dragon next turn if I hit the third mountain. So I'd rather play Grum Goalie first. That way, if I do hit that mountain, Lock Dragon comes out as a 4 3 instead of a 3 2. And if we don't hit that mountain, we can just cast the Rose Thorn Acolyte instead. Alright, double giant opportunity. Definitely a way to get that 7 7 out there. So we are going to have to deal with that. And in green red, we're not going to have any removal that does anything great against that. Kenrith's Transformation is our best option, and that is that is not currently in hand, so what's our plan here? We're definitely not attacking into that, although if I do attack into that, I could kill it with my Pump Spell plus a Scalding Cauldron when I have 5 mana. I don't have 5 mana right now, I only have 4. I can play the Carver as like a 3-2, but that doesn't seem great. We could play Wolverine. That's a 3-2 blocker. We could double block with a 3-3, a 3-2, and give plus 2, plus 2 to something, and that would kill it. Although, at the cost of both of our creatures. That, again, does not seem great. I think I'll just cast a Rose Thorn Acolyte here, set up my mana. For the future turns, if they attack me with a 7-7, I'll just take it and hope that we can crack back at them well. Although they still have a pretty loaded hand, so it's likely they'll be casting more creatures here. Take the 7 for now. Next turn we will have 5 mana, so we could like just cast a Blood Haze Wolverine and hold up Scalding Cauldron. So we could do a 3 for 1 trade to get rid of the 7-7. Definitely trading several cards into it, unfortunately. Against green-blue, that's also a pretty hard sell, because they could have a lot of instant speed stuff to like bounce one of our creatures and really ruin the trade. Well, now I can use two Garenbrig Carver's Adventures on Grumgully to make Grumgully a 7-7 blocker to trade with that. That's one option. Another option is to cast Bloodhaze Wolverine. If I cast Bloodhaze Wolverine, it comes out as a 3-2. I could double block with Grumgully Wolverine and cast two Shield Smites to make my thing big enough to kill the giant. Which do I get blown out harder by? I lose two of my onboard creatures and an adventure if they use some kind of bounce spell and I do the Bloodhaze Wolverine option. If I do the Grumgully option, I lose... 
Grumgully and, and the adventures. I think I get blown out more if I go for the double block with Blood Haze Wolverine and try to do a Shield's Might. Because now I get to make a block, stop all the damage, cast one Garen Brig Carver. If that goes through, then the Carver's in the Adventure Zone. He's safe. And uh, if it doesn't go through, most likely Grumgully's just back in my hand rather than dead. So it's possible I only lose one card here if they do some sort of combat trick on me. Because the Garenberg Carvers are going to be in the Adventure Stone now, so we get to cast them as creatures later. If they do just use like an actual removal spell immediately here, I don't know what it would be, but it would blow us out. So if they use the Bounce spell now, Garenbrig Carver goes to the grave and Grumgully goes to our hand. Alright, looks like we actually just trade there. Happy to see that. Oh no. <laughs> Not happy to see an Oko. Oko is, of course... One of the best Planeswalkers ever made, banned in oh several formats. So Oko gets to make foods at a plus two, and then start making all the foods three threes. If I play anything that's better than a three three, they can just turn it into a three three. So if I play my Lock Dragon, it's just going to be a three three elk instead. How do we play against this Oko here? We can Scaldron Cauldron kill their three three, but then we don't have attacks because Acolyte's already dead. Guess we just cast a Garenbrig Carver here. It's better than just playing a 2-1, and we're not going to have the mana to play the 2-1 and hold up anything else anyway, so just play the biggest creature we can to try to attack into Oko. Twin Veil Tree Folk, going to make that food a 5-5. Five five. With its Oaken Boon. Your new look is enchanting. Yeah, I take eight damage if I don't block here. I go to five life, but then I can kill Oko if I send Garenbrig Carver at it and the Scaldon Cauldron. Unless that's only to creatures. Uh, Cauldron's only to creatures, so I don't kill Oko. Yeah, I guess I should probably not take eight then and actually get one of these creatures off the board. Hey, Rampart Smasher trades for the food, except that they can just turn into a 3-3. If I cast Rampart Smasher, they just plus one Oko, turn Smasher into a 3-3, and then I have to chump block with a 3-3 against her 5-5. Seems pretty awful. I honestly think maybe Garenbrig Carver is again the best play. And now we're just hoping to draw a basic so I could cast Wolverine and throw a Cauldron at something. Potentially block... Block the 5-5 five five with a 2-1 and throw a cauldron at it. But we're now in a position where we're having to trade our, our real cards into just tokens that they get to keep producing here. So it's not a good position. Just trying to think if we even have any way out of this. We have Searing Barrage, but that only damages creatures. Just taking a peek at the deck list we have here. We have Kendra's Transformation, but that's only creatures to make 3-3s. Three yeah, we don't have any way. Red Cap Melee can damage Planeswalkers, but Red Cap Melee does 4 damage. Oko's at like 7 now. Go down to 3. There's the land to Wolverine plus Cauldron here. Could attack Oko, but then I die on the crackback, so let's not. I need to be able to block both creatures here, being down at 3 life. If they have a removal spell, I'm not dead because I can chump block the 5-5 five five and throw the cauldron at the 3-3. Three three. But our plan here is to be able to kill both of their creatures, hopefully. All right. 
point, temporary removal spell from Queen of Ice to shut down the biggest blocker. So I can no longer kill the 5-5 five five here, because I need to stop all of this damage to survive. So I have to kill the 3-3 three three instead. Garenbrit Paladin's a little interesting here, because even if they turn into a 3-3, three three because it keeps the plus one plus one counter, it'll be a 4-4. Four four. But that's still not big enough to trade into the... 5-5. Five, five. Play Prophet of the Peak to Scry here, but then they turn into a 3-3. Three, three. I chump block there, take 2, go to 1. I can only play one card here, so... No matter what I do, all I can do is play a 3-3 three, three because of Oko's ability. But Paladin, it would be a 4-4. Four, four. But even a 4-4, four, four, we have to chump block the 5-5 five, five or we die to that. So we might as well play the one with a good Enter the Battlefield effect. Get a little bit of a scry off here. Twin Veil Tree Folk and Kendra's Transformation. Neither of those are going to be enough to get us out of this, but I'm not even sure what we're digging for here. They can also just use Oko's ultimate at this point. Swap the food token with the um, the creature. Oh wait, no they can't. They can only swap it with something with power 3 or less. Okay. So at least Oko's ultimate is not incredible. Let's broaden your existence. Oh. That's right. They can just make the food a 3-3 and then I'm dead. Well, do get to kill the 5-5 five five there at least. Well, definitely had it served to us there. Our crown was officially stolen. Try to go to 7-0. We're at 1-1 one one now, so that is not an option, but we can still 7-2 or 7-1 it. Still do the best we can. Oko just having a fun, mischievous time there. We did not have enough of an aggressive start to pressure Oko in any way, so Oko just got to do all of the Classic Oko things. Make a bunch of food elks. Alright. We are stuck on green mana here, but if we're playing against another green deck, we get to drop down Oko Adversary turn two. We are... Red and green exclusively in this deck, so as soon as we hit any two lands, we can cast Rampart Smasher. We'll have a 0-4 to block for a while. I'm actually going to keep this, but it's it's obviously not great. We do definitely want to draw a mountain sometime soon. Any two lands for the Rampart Smasher, and ideally two red sources by the time we draw three more lands. Our opponent starts out with an island. Just had to double check. Always have to do that with the old school lands. They are very pretty, but pretty hard to tell what they are. Well, this is, looks this looks like that classic um, kind of Japanese architecture there. That little shrine. Looks kind of like a Kamigawa shrine but on a, like an old school land, so that's pretty cool. There's literally a kangaroo on their planes. All right, so opponent definitely has some pretty sweet lands. We are on our third mana now. We have drawn another forest, so that's pretty great for the Garenbrig Paladin. We have the triple green to get the extra counter when we cast that, and we're only one mana away from Okame Adversary or Rampart Smasher now, so that's pretty cool. Mysterious Pathlighter will start things off for our opponent. A 2-2 flyer that whenever a creature with an adventure enters the battlefield, it gets a plus one plus one counter. So this is a 2-2 flyer forever, but their adventure creatures get plus one plus one counters. Okay. Seems pretty good. 
think I just cast the Rose Thorn Acolyte, and I have the ability to give that haste to cast a Red Cap melee if I really need to kill something, but ideally we're not going to do that right now because it does require me to sacrifice a land to kill something with that. We definitely don't want to sacrifice lands right now when we have a couple 4 mana cards and some 5 mana cards yet to cast. So we will have to just take a few hits from the Path Lighter. White Blue in this format has a little bit of a Flyers theme and a little bit of an art Artifact and uh, Enchantment theme, as you can see from Arcanist's Owl being the next play here. When it enters the battlefield, they look at the top four, grab an artifact or enchantment from among them, reveal it, and put it into their hand. Very solid card. Four mana, three, three flyer, and it draws you another card. Unfortunately, they did fail to find there, so just a three, three flyer. But even then, pretty solid. We did hit a land, so we are able to start casting our four mana cards, and thanks to Rose Thorn Acolyte, even our five mana cards. So, I could play a Garen Brig Paladin and it gets a counter here. Am I trying to outrace the Flyers? When I only have one removal spell and it's a red cap melee, that seems like... Seems like a possibility. Would I rather cast Sarkara here? No, I have plenty of things to cast in my hand right now. So I'll have plenty to do with all my mana first. I think we cast just our biggest creature. 5-5 five, five that can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And I'm also going to cast the more, more expensive one uh, rather than the, uh, the slightly cheaper one. So that later on I might be able to cast this and red cap melee in one turn where it's it's harder to do that with a Garenberg Paladin. Just start racing them. We can tap the drawbridge to get that attack in there because they're not going to have any haste creatures in white and blue. And their whole field has flying anyway so we already can't block. So they hit us for 5 a turn, but potentially we hit them for 5 a turn, and we're going to start hitting them for 10 a turn if Rampart Smasher gets to stay on the field. Lonesome Unicorn spits out a 2-2 little chump blocker here. Could really try to race our opponent and drop down Rampart Smasher and Red Cap melee their Knight token. That way I get to hit for 10 this turn, they go to 5 life. Facing against two five power creatures. That's a possibility, but then my only removal spell in hand is gone and I can't do anything to the flyers. Against an Arcanist Towel and a Mysterious Pathlighter, we're taking five a turn. So we go down to eight. We're on a three turn clock. They do go on a really fast clock, and thanks to the Crashing Drawbridge, every creature I play is immediately getting into the fray. I like the idea here, although it is risky. They do have an instance, potentially. So it is holding here. See if the red cap melee goes off. Sacrifice a green source here. Hit for 10. They have two mana up. What could this be? I've got to be missing something. Maybe it's something that bounces one of both of our cards? Oh no, it's Brazen Borrower. Oh geez. So I was just thinking about like the common and uncommon stuff they could possibly have, because that would be the most likely stuff. Um, in common, there is an instant that would return one of their cards and one of my cards to hand. That would have been pretty bad for us, because they throw Arcanist Sowell back in their hand, recast it, maybe get value off of it there. Um, and obviously they push one of our things back into hand, so we don't get to get them as aggressively. But Brazen Borrower is extremely bad for us, because now they get to keep all their power on their field, and they have potentially a 3-1 flyer coming out uh, to help end the game there as well. So Brazen Borrower is really scary. So they're at 10. If we cast a Garenbrig Paladin again, they have to block. They have to chump block here. And then we take 6 in the sky. If they have a pump spell, we die, but there's nothing we can do about that. We can't make anything that can block their flyers here. 
I think we just Garenberg Paladin. Force a block here. Put them to five. Seems like the best play we have. Very scary game. The heart rate is definitely up. All right. They are on a white-blue deck that seems to have a decent amount of adventures with a mysterious pathlighter out, so wouldn't be surprised to just die to, like, a Silver Flame Squire's adventure, uh, giving plus two, plus two for the final bit of damage, but we'll have to see what they have here. Sir Eleonora is another blocker, but no pump spell there. And they just attack with one of them, so we have one last turn to try to push in lethal here. We can cast... Sir Kara the Bold to ping them for one. If we hit them for only four here. Currently... Currently if we attack all... They can block... Everything. Because they can block Garenberg with Owl. Smasher... No, Smasher can't be blocked by Knights. So one of these gets through, because Smasher can't be blocked by Knights or Walls, so this can't be blocked by Eleanor, and this can't be blocked by Eleanora. Right? One of these gets through. Um... Is there any reason to push in one more damage here? I don't think so. One of these gets through? Oh my god, okay. <sighs> the flavor text on Rampart Smasher coming in clutch there. I totally forgot what its minor effect was, and then I just had to just check it out there. Yes, we got to make that attack there, and then... They have to block with the Owl, so even if they had a way to block with Eleonora as well, they'd have to trump block with both creatures. They only have three power of flying to hit us next turn, so they put us to one life. So the plan was to attack like that. That way I'd have the mana to cast Sir Eleonora and give her haste. So that um, Sir Eleonora's on the board, and then um, during their end step we just like give her haste and ping them for one. Uh, push them a little bit closer to death. If things did not pan out there. But I could have also seen some potential combat tricks or instant speed removal um, that could have just really blown us out there and just got us killed the next turn. But that was the play that I was thinking for. That's why I only attacked with the five fives there. And that way, even if they find a way to block with Eleonora by like drawing an additional card or something, we can uh, we can follow up with our best follow-up play for the next potential turn. Two and one now, heading into round four with green-red monsters. I like this hand quite a bit. We've got that drawbridge coming out. That has been a lot of fun. That did a lot of work last game. Without crashing drawbridge, we would not be hitting them fast enough to race. And drawbridge definitely put us over that, uh, over that line. In terms of the speed we needed. So turn two drawbridge should block a couple things and then once we hit turn four we get a rampart smasher coming in smashing things immediately. Seems like a good time all around. Go ahead and keep this. The opponent starts with white and a fairy guide mother. 1-1 one, one flyer there. Pretty good adventure on this as well giving plus two, plus one, and flying for only two mana. Can definitely close out some games, giving some additional power and evasion to one of your creatures in the late game. Youthful Knight now, a 2-1 first strike. Well, Drawbridge will ideally just keep blocking that. I think I'll just keep playing mountains here. That way, if we draw like a lock dragon and we draw four red sources, we can dump that out as quickly as possible. If we draw a thunderous snapper, 
the card that requires four green from us. We're very far from casting that either way, so I don't see a reason to drop the forest immediately. We also don't have anything that requires two green man in our deck. It's one or four. I guess we do have the Adamant Knight that wants us to have three green mana, but we can cast that even with just one. All right, there we go. Showing off the power of that Gift of the Fae from Fairy Guide Mother there. Give that youthful knight flying. Smack us in the sky there, down to 14 now. Just play another red source. We're not playing anything out this turn. Joust isn't going to do anything when we have a zero power creature. And we're not going to red cap melee and sacrifice a land until late in the game here. Opponent does seem to be stuck on just two planes for now. Although, we have seen multiple one and two mana creatures from them now. Two one mana creatures and a two mana creature. So they could be aggressive enough to still ship away at us quite well, even with only the two lands. Taking one here. I don't think there's an instant speed adventure for only two mana to give plus two plus two in white. I think the adventure in white to do that is three mana. It gives plus two plus two and untaps at instant speed. Or for two mana at sorcery speed, you get plus two. So pretty sure the block was safe there. And it was. But the attack was safe as well. They're just attacking into a zero four. All right. So now, I mean, Sir Kara is going to be good this game. Once we hit five mana, we just start killing their fairy guide mothers. Um, but for now, I think we're just casting a Rampart Smasher. So we actually have a big enough creature on this board to block Youthful Knight and survive. I think I could give Smasher haste here to just hit them for five, put them to 15. But if we do that, we take two extra damage from them. And I'm thinking we'll probably have a better late game than they will. So I think we just play the long game here and stop every little bit of damage that we can. Obviously, if I give Smasher haste, it will tap down the drawbridge. Unfortunately, it looks like our opponent is stuck on two mana for a little while longer than they had hoped for, and they're just gonna scoop them up there. A little preemptive, but I think that we did have the good late game that they may have been worried about us stabilizing with there. Definitely not a fun situation for our opponent. Alright, 3-1, and one, heading into round 5. Pretty great start to the draft. Um, and I like this hand a lot. It's actually got a really good curve. We have the Drawbridge on 2, Rosethorn Acolyte on 3, and then Smasher or Sirkara, because Acolyte can give us the 5th mana on turn 4 if we want to cheat out the Sirkara early. Very solid hand here. Our opponent has taken a mulligan, it looks like. Their hand did move around a bit. Taking two mulligans on the play. That is unfortunate. Five card hand. They start out with Curious Pair creating a food token. With Rose Thorn Acolyte, I feel very safe just dropping a forest as my first land. Because even if somehow I need a billion red mana, I can use Seasonal Ritual uh, to turn one of my mana into red. Drop down our drawbridge, block that curious pair all day long, and set up for some explosive plays with our large creatures in the late game. Opponent has two forests, another curious pair, so they've got a lot of food to gain a bunch of life and stay into this stay in this game for a while, that's for sure. I think I'll play the uh, the red source over the green source again in case of like lock dragon and we have more red cards in hand uh, than green here. Although I will just cast a Rose Thorn Acolyte here. That way we have five mana next turn. We can cast either of these. Looks like our opponent is also on green red. They have played a mountain turn three. But curious pairs seem to be all they're doing for now. Five mana for Sirkara, or we can just cast Rampart Smasher. I think I'd rather just get Smash in here. Well, we do hit for five, put them down to 15. But they do have six life worth of food tokens here. 
They do seem to be on green, red, and white from what we've seen thus far. We have a Joust to fight something, but I'd rather save that for something better than a 1-3. For now, I think we just smash in. And I guess we could have cast Sarkara and given haste there and attacked with her as well. But I would rather keep her like completely out of combat in case of any sort of combat tricks here. Like this is a definite combat trick if they're blocking with both curious pairs. Or some kind of damaging spell here. Insatiable appetite. Sacrifice of food. Give plus five, plus five. That will kill the Rampart Smasher here. Oh yeah. <laughs> that will that will very much kill the Rampart Smasher. A six, eight, and a one, three. Alright, well, we cast our Sarkara. Try to start drawing cards off of her. We can give her haste in their end step and ping them for damage if I want. We are required to exile a card to do that. Or, we are required to exile a card whenever we uh, hit their face. Ooh, if they just make a couple 1-1 one -one tokens, I'd rather just hit a token here. And just hit their face during our turn when we can actually cast whatever we exile. Well, we have a bunch of lands in hand, so we're not doing much if we just kill another token. Although we can kill the token before they get the ranger out to keep them from attacking us at all. Yeah, but just joust in hand, I think I want to just shoot face here, see what we draw into. Ooh, thunderous snapper. Definitely playing a green source and getting that onto the board. Nice 4-4 and we can draw cards when we play anything better. Not going to joust anything. Should I give haste here? Yeah, we're at 20. They just have one power creatures. Let's give haste. Send in. Force a chump block, potentially with that 1-1 token, because we could kill it later with Sarkara. And that is the choice made here. Definitely makes sense. When we have a pinger on board to be able to kill it later. Outlaw's Merriment, so that was definitely the plan this game. At the beginning of their upkeep, they choose one at random. They get a 3-1, a 2-1, or a 1-2 that deals 1 to something when it comes into play. Luckily, Sarkara can kill 3-1s and 2-1s. The 1-2s are going to be a little annoying, but they can't kill any of our cards, so I think we're still doing okay. So let's just shoot the face and keep drawing cards for a second. Garenberg Paladin, that seems pretty great. We even draw a card off of Thunder Snapper with that. Really getting value here. Oh, and that can't be blocked except by things with more than two power. So it's really good for that reason as well. We're going to give haste here, just attack in. Yeah, we're doing pretty swell. We could attack in with Rose Thorn Acolyte as well, but I think they'll just throw a Curious Pair onto it and we don't get any more damage in that way, so it's probably better to just leave it as a blocker in case they get a 2-1 lifelink, so they can't just send in for a free life gain there, but it's more likely they'd hold that back for a blocker anyway. Could I Spinning Wheel here? Should I Spinning Wheel here? I don't think so. I have like a million mana after this, so I can just do that next turn. I guess they'd rather Chump Block with whatever they get out of Merry Mint. So, yeah, tapping down the, the Acolyte isn't that bad, except they got the, they got the token that, that they might want to attack with, because I can kill that with Sarkara if they don't attack with it, so the only way they definitely gain life is if they do. Well, that was the one thing that would definitely have been good to hold back the Acolyte for. They are just going to scoop him up there. We do hit him for a lot of damage. We get to tap down a creature with the spinning wheel and attack with everybody else. So we... They can't block that. They chump block the four. They take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not quite lethal, but very close there. And Outlaw's Merriment definitely not going to get them out of that game. So there was the concession there. We are at four and one now for this Throne of Eldraine quick draft. Pretty great, 
draft overall. Definitely having a fun time with the green-red monsters. Definitely debatable between sticking to our guns with blue-red or hopping into the, the green-blue monsters here. Or, I'm sorry, green-red monsters here. But I'm having a great time with green-red monsters. I think it's it's working out quite well. We aren't even drawing the the rare that we hopped into green for. And it's uh, performing well, so... Definitely a nice draft overall, thus far. Ooh, we have that turn three Grumgully. We could turn three Grumgully into turn four Okame OK Adversary, potentially. Do need another land for that, but I have Thrill of Possibility to discard something. If I need to, uh, if I need to draw into more lands, I can discard our five mana card here. Yeah, definitely going to keep this. If we're playing against green, we might just turn to an Okame OK Adversary here. Opponent starts off with a Plains into Fairy Guide Mother. We do have a Blood Haze Wolverine turn two. With Thrill of Possibility, I do like putting this onto the board. If we don't draw our land for turn next turn, we can Thrill of Possibility, and that will also trigger the plus one power on Blood Haze Wolverine and First Strike if we can do anything tricky with that. If we just attack in and they block with something. Ooh, it's there. Throwing in all that glitters onto the Fairy Guide Mother, I highly doubt that they are blocking. Alright. So that gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and enchantment they control. So they could be trying to race us pretty hard here. I think we send in with the Blood Haze Wolverine. Discard a card to Thrill of Possibility and draw here to get an extra damage in. See what we hit. What do I want to discard? I could discard the five mana card. Or... Discard like a Garenbrig Carver. Discard the Spinning Wheel. Spinning Wheel does ramp us into the five and four mana cards. Although I do think we want to just play Grumgully turn three over the Spinning Wheel. We're drawing two cards off of this. We're probably supposed to just discard like Sirkara. I kind of want to just card the Carver, though. So I'm just thinking of potential curbs. If we hit a land every turn, and we could go Grumgully into Adversary into Sirkara. If we don't hit a land every turn, we go Grumgully into Spinning Wheel, and then we play 4-drop, 5-drop. Yeah, I think I discard the Carver here. All right, and no lands thus far. Definitely glad I didn't discard the Spinning Wheel at the very least. Because then when we hit the third mana, we'll have four. Opponent starts off with three planes. They could be monocolored. They could also be stuck off of their second color. Nothing yet from our opponent. Just the fairy guide mother racing with a blood haze wolverine for now. They could have the plus two, plus two on tap a creature adventure here. So worth the attack. We're not winning this race right now. It's probably better safe than sorry. Just drop a drawbridge now. Ooh, that would have been very bad for me as well. That was not even what I was playing around, and uh, and that would have got me bad. Two 1-1s, one and they gained some life, so they just trade a single 1-1 one -one into my Blood Haze Wolverine. That would have been really bad. So block there, take three. Resolute Rider can get indestructible for three mana. So it attacks in as indestructible. It's also enough... Power to attack into a Crashing Drawbridge, so Resolute Rider is definitely a bad time for us. They're also only one mana away from giving Lifelink and Indestructible, so racing will be very impossible once they hit that. Kind of think we sort of need to Spinning Wheel here. 
so that Strakara is a potential option later, so we can start shredding away their 1-1s at the very least. Although just a 3-3 out is definitely a better blocker than no blocker, and Spinning Wheel doesn't give us any blockers, clearly. Yeah, we've got big, like, powerful high mana cost cards that can help us get out of this more than a 3-3 can. I think we dropped the Spinning Wheel. We are getting beaten down pretty hard here, though. Yep. Am I at the point where I have to just trade with a 1-1 one -one with Blood Haze Wolverine? <laughs> I might be. We take 6 here if we don't block the Flyer and the Resolute Rider. Go down to 7. This is not great. Wintermore Commander. Oh dear. A Death Toucher that gives another one of their knights indestructible every turn it attacks, so it can just give Rider indestructible off of the attack, and they only have to spend the mana on Lifelink now. We do hit the fifth mana, so we can cast Sir Kara here. So we can cast her, block Wintermore Commander, and shoot the human and take six. also throw the drawbridge onto the rider. It seems like our best blocks we have available, otherwise we just stop one creature with Adversary or Grumgully. We take two damage in the sky no matter what, but we could stop all of the other damage if I let all of our creatures die here. Does haste help me with any of our other creatures? I don't think haste helps with any of our other creatures, although a 0-4 blocker can block things other than Resolute Rider. But obviously if we kill Wintermore Commander and the 1-1 human, then the only thing we need to block on the ground is the 4-2. The Yeah, I think we do actually cash in on the block on Resolute Rider now. Try to get this Prophet of the Peak out potentially if we hit another land, then that's big enough to block Resolute Rider every turn and we just take the flying damage. If I don't block Resolute Rider right now, then just one more hit from the Flyer is lethal. I don't think I can afford that. So, we play to our outs here. We do the chump block now, that way if we hit our 6th mana next turn, we can cast Prof of the Peak, we can hold off the Resolute Rider with that, and then if we can get that on the board to stabilize on the ground, we can then maybe eventually cast a Lock Dragon to block in the sky, or draw into a Red Cap melee to block in the sky as well, or kill the Flyer uh, with that one. So I think this is our, our best block for the cards we could potentially draw into uh, to maybe... Stabilize this board, stop the bleeding. If they have more creatures, of course, that is going to nullify that plan, but it's the best block we have regardless of if they play more creatures. So, Bell of the Brawl. It also has Menace and gives all of the knights plus power when it attacks. All we can do is play a single blocker here, so we block the 4-2, take 5 from the other 2. And that is gonna be game there. Unfortunate game for us. Our opponent just 
got off a little too aggressively for us. I think we may have been able to stabilize with a couple more turns. However, we didn't have any way to deal with the flyer by the end of that game even, so we were likely to die to the flyer regardless. But we may have been able to stabilize on the ground. If our opponent was just a little bit slower, or if we drew our mana just a little bit faster. Alright. Our Wildborn Preserver has come out to play this game. We are in round 7 now, 4 and 2. So any loss will kick us out of this, but we can still get there to 7 wins, only 3 wins to go. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand, try out the Wildborn Preserver this game. Opponent starts with a Mantle of Tides. Whenever they draw their second card per turn, they get to attach that to something for free. It gives plus one, plus two. Kind of a potentially fun combat trick. If you have anything that draws two cards at instant speed, like our Thrill of Possibility in our deck, you can attach it at instant speed. That's the funnest thing you can do with it. And our opponent's on blue-red, so they could have the, the Thrill of Possibility combo for sure. Um... So we can flash in a Wildborn Preserver here, but I am definitely not going to want to attempt to block a Bloodhaze Wolverine. It's not a trade I really want to make, and it's possible that they'd have cards that would make it not even a trade. That would just give it first strike and, and win there, like Opt. Ooh, Opt does throw Mantle of Tides on as well, so our opponent is on a very aggressive start. We are getting hit for four here, and they have multiple Wolverines out. We do have a Scalding Cauldron to kill something next turn, and we can cast a Wildborn Preserver this turn, so we have a blocker for one of them and a removal spell for the other one. Is it better to remove one of them, or to cast a 2-3 here? Probably better to remove one of them. Because we can also hold up Garenbrig Carver as a pump spell, give plus two, plus two, if we just pass. So we have multiple instant speed things that we're holding up. One of them's a trick, one of them's an onboard removal spell, so they'll see that one coming. Tome Raider's the play, so they're both going to get plus one power and first strike here. I think I just Scalding Cauldron the bigger one then. Although they can move the mantle of the tides here and they don't get any extra, they do get extra toughness. Oh, that is actually really awkward. Because if I Scald and Cauldron this Wolverine, then one they draw the card, they'll have drawn their second card and they can just move mantle onto this one. So either way, they get to hit me with the biggest one here. Yep, either way they get to hit me with the biggest one here. Ooh, I guess it depends on how things stack. Let's see. How do the triggers go on the stack? They have that aim at that one. Alright, then we'll kill we'll kill that Wolverine then, I think. We'll see if this works out. I don't think they can yeah. Because they targeted the, the Wolverine that already had it on. We uh we just kill that one, and then it dies before it gets plus one plus one. So that works there. We do take three damage here, down to thirteen. They have a Scalding Cauldron as well to kill the Wildborn Preserver, unfortunately. Don't think it's worth cashing in to stop three damage. We'd rather scoop up three of their mana to, to our Wildborn Preserver. And we may even be able to give it enough plus counters to survive that. Probably not, but uh, I guess it depends on when they cast it. We've got an Okam Adversary here. So, we have four mana. We can play a 2-3 Death Touch, a 3-2, or a 2-3 that adds mana. If we play none of those, we can use Garenbrig Carver if they try to Scalding Cauldron our Preserver, but then it's not going to block anyway uh, if they draw another card. Because it'll take three damage, but it'll have four toughness. It'll basically have one toughness, so we give it plus two, plus two just to trade it off with Wolverine anyway. Yeah, I think I just play a Rosethorn Acolyte here, and I've got nothing else to do with my one more mana, so I might as well make Preserver a 3-3. They basically have to throw the Cauldron at it at that point. Seems solid to me. 
So at least we know they're pretty unlikely to get another creature on the board this turn because they're going to have to spend their mana getting Wildborn Preserver out of the way. Otherwise, they can't attack with either of their creatures thanks to their reach from Wildborn Preserver. Although they do have enough mana to equip a Mantle of Tides, even if they don't um, draw another card this turn. They do kill the Reach creature and send in with the Flyer. Definitely makes sense. And an Improbable Alliance. So whenever they draw their second card per turn, they get a 1-1 Flyer. And this also triggers all of their draw 2 per turn cards with its 6 mana effect, allowing them to draw and discard each turn. They do only have 5 mana out right now, but if the last card in their hand is a land or they draw into one... We will definitely have a bad time. I do like Sarkara a lot on this board. I think she's our best play. Although, alternatively, if we cast Crashing Drawbridge, then we can hold up the ability to give her haste next turn. So we can just ping with her immediately when we play her and just kill Bloodhaze Wolverine. So if we cast her now, or if we cast her next turn, if we cast Drawbridge this turn, we get to start using her immediately regardless. It's like, I guess I actually like drawbridge a little better then because we might be able to surprise kill a wolverine with shield's might from garen brig carver and i don't think it's worth an attack in case they have any form of removal we're down to 12 on a whole blocks here yep so the improbable alliance and they might attack in here because wolverine will be a 3-2 first strike and we might actually be able to kill a wolverine with garen brig carver's adventure which would definitely make um Playing the drawbridge instead of the Sarkar, the better play, if that is the attack they go with. If they just attack in the sky, then it's kind of either way. Mantle goes on to flyer, so it's a 2-3 in the sky. I am actually really surprised they didn't go with the attack on the ground, but that is unfortunate for me. Would have been a really great block there. I guess we just take the two then. So now we just cast Sarkara. Do have six mana. So I could cast a Thunderous Snapper and do something else. Or an OK Man Adversary and do something else. I can hold up the ability here. I think it's almost definitely better to cast Sarkara so we can start killing their flying 1-1s. One take less damage that way. We're not going to give haste and, and kill a flyer until the blockers step. That way I can still block their wolverine with a 0-4. I guess they didn't attack in because there's... Yeah, they were tapped out. Never mind. I'm kind of a doofus. <laughs> they were tapped out, so the wolverine doesn't actually get in for any damage. It just gets blocked by a 0-4 with its three powers. So there's literally no reason to attack. I guess if they had thrown Mantle of the Tides onto Wolverine, then it would have been big enough to attempt to attack in. Um... So that would have been the play that could have worked in our favor. So we are giving haste to Sarkara. We'll see if they have an instant speed trick here. They do. They are just going to kill her. Nothing else to deal with flyers here. This may just end this run in the Throne of Eldraine quick drafts. We take three in the sky here. Go to one life. If I cast Thunder Snapper, it's actually the only thing I can do because it requires four green. But we could cast um, OK Mad Adversary and hold up Carver's ability, I guess. We only need one blocker on the ground because they only have one attacker on the ground, so I may as well try to draw a card off the adversary. Get closer to something to get us out of dying to the Flyers. But Sarkara was our best bet. Other than that, we have a Lock Dragon we could draw into to trade with Tome Raider or a Red Cap Melee to kill the Tome Raider. Well, there's the Lock Dragon, but we unfortunately can't cast it immediately here. We have to wait till next turn, in which case we are going to die to just the 1-1 one, one token, or one of the multiple 1-1 one, one tokens. Probable Alliance is a very sweet card. It is the, the build around uncommon for the blue-red uh, strategy there for sure. Oh, and they could just bounce our one blocker to hand. Well, that certainly ends it. So that is going to end today's draft. Throne of Eldraine, quick draft it was this time around. We are at 4 and 3 there. Pretty average run. Not the worst, not the best. 
pretty happy with that uh, win rate if it were a premier draft, because in premier draft you get basically exactly what you paid in here. But unfortunately in the quick drafts, it is 750 gems or 5,000 golds to enter. So in order to break even in quick draft, you have to win six wins. And I guess you do go a little above a break even. So five wins is sort of the break even in quick draft. So would love to hit that, but even a 4-3, not bad at all. Definitely rusty on the format. But pretty fun return to the format. Had a good time with green red giants there. Got to cast some big stuff. Make some some pretty fun plays. Decent deck all around. And uh yeah, nice to take another peek at that uh, format after such a long time off from it. Anyways, that will end today's video. We've got plenty... Well, I... Not the royal we... I've got plenty of <laughs> Magic the Gathering limited comment... Commentary? I guess. Content, commentary, whatever you want to call it, coming to you. In the coming days, we still have... Arena Cube Draft on for a couple days, so I'll probably have one more of those at the very least. It depends on when um, when or if Strixhaven has an early access event, and if I am in on that. Um, definitely have not heard as much on that as before, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, definitely going to have some more content for you. At least one more Arena Cube Draft, and Strixhaven is a very close. The official release coming this Thursday, so at the very latest, we will start up the Strixhaven drafts on Thursday. So anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Thanks for requesting the Eldraine draft. It was definitely uh, fun to uh, to switch it around with the formats. I am kind of a variety drafter. I like playing uh, a good variety of formats, so it was nice to to get out of the cube drafts for a second, throw in a, a turbo draft and Eldraine draft in there for a second. Uh, but I think I will do at least one more cube draft, maybe two more. And who knows, maybe, maybe if I'll if you all liked the uh, Throne of Eldraine draft, we'll do one more cube draft and one more Eldraine draft, something like that. I think we've got at least two days until the early access event, if the early access event happens. Um, but we'll see. So, definitely some great things on the horizon. And I would like to thank you all very much for watching, as always. And I'll see you again very soon for some more Magic Arena content.